Hi, I'm Jack from Jack Bell's Photography and today I'll be talking about the Nikon Z6 and my recent experiences of using it for underwater macro photography and video. So what gear do I use? Well, I use the Nikon Z6 obviously uh, for macro, for both photography and video. I, I've been using the 105 f2.8 macro lens with VR and the FTZ adapter. I also use the CNC housing for the Z6, the Icolite strobe uh, with Retro Snoot, uh, and this is great because I've got focus light coming straight out of the snoot to show me where the flash is going to appear. Uh, and then for photography, I primarily use the focus light, the fixed Neo. Uh, this has got a red function, which is great for not spooking uh, macro subjects on night dives, which is primarily how I use uh, this setup. And for video, I've got this vid video uh, in on video light, but I also use some Keldan video lights as well. So to uh, set the camera up for underwater photography, first of all, what you need to do is remove the uh, eyepiece cup. So that's already removed here. Uh, and uh, I've got my menu, a number of items which I've put into my menu. So I access that via the, uh, the video record button on the photo uh, settings. And in iMenu, what I've done is I've got apply settings to live view and I turn that off because I found for uh, nighttime photography then uh, I'm better off not having the live view. So I get a really good view actually with the electronic viewfinder. It boosts the brightness for, uh, on, on night dives. So that's really good. Uh, the monitor brightness I've got in there as another setting, but so far I haven't had to adjust the monitor brightness. And the limit, motor, uh, limit monitor mode selection. So normally you access the monitor mode here and uh, for land photography, I've got auto, and that's what I normally use, uh, and then uh, viewfinder, and then screen. For underwater photography, uh, I normally turn the auto off, um, and what I find is actually I'm generally using the screen because it's easier to get the, uh, the camera, the housing in the right position just by looking at the screen rather than trying to get my eye to the viewfinder. So that way I can get some really, um, really different angles for the subjects and really low without having to uh, get too close to coral or sand. For taking photos, what I do is I use the, the, uh, the four-way arrow buttons uh, to move the focus point to where I need it. Um, then I press the focus lever. There are quite a few levers on the side here. So the focus lever uh, is near the back. Uh, the back lever sometimes I set to center the focus point and then I pro press the shutter lever at the front. Now I do have, uh, uh, there's a lever on this side, that's for reviewing photos. So if we need to check the photo, I'll quickly check, press lever to check the photo. Uh, but if I've got the focus right, then I trust the focus of the system because it's been very good so far. And then I can quickly take another series of photos without disturbing the subject. For videos, it's similar. Uh, after, there's a switch on the back for uh, changing to video mode. Uh, I sometimes will uh, press the focus lever to focus on a particular subject. Uh, I always turn the red light off uh, because I find that it uh, interferes with the white balance uh, and it's harder to change white balance uh, for video than it is for photos. For photos it's really easy actually. Uh, for videos I use iMovies to combine videos and it's a bit more tricky to get the white balance exactly right and to eliminate a red cast. Um, the, for, uh, for both photos and videos I use these uh, user modes. So I've got U1 set to uh, photography uh, for macro. And uh, so depending on whether I've got the lever on photo macro, U1 saves different, uh, mostly different settings for photography and video. So what I've got is uh, for the focus for photography, I've got AFS and single point autofocus. Uh, I find that's the, the best 
option for uh, getting the focus on exactly where I need it, the eye of a subject or the Rhino Program Media Branch, for instance. And the focus has been really good, really reliable so far. The metering I use centrated for both photo and video because I want to get the, uh, the lighting right for the subject itself. Uh, white balance, uh, I've actually set to the color temperature of the Icolite strobes, uh, that's 4800 Kelvin. Now ideally I'd like to change the white balance between photo and video, but currently a limitation of the Nikon Z6 is that the white balance is the same for both. So hopefully that's something they'll change in a, a future firmware update. Um, I've also I've got apply settings live view set off as I mentioned already, uh, vibration reduction on and fill flash uh, fill flash for the flash mode. Uh, for the photos, I have a shutter speed set to one one hundredth of a second, the ISO to two hundred, and then I'll adjust the aperture. So I can quickly set the aperture to the desired amount, right down to f forty. Uh, for video. The, the settings are generally different, so I use picture control as standard. Uh, the white balance, I can't change between the photo and the video, so I uh, tend to uh, keep that the same. It's uh, too fiddly to start changing underwater between uh, photos and videos for the different lights that I use. Uh, the frame size I use as standard is 4K. Um, now, what I find it's better to uh, have the uh, the 4K underwater because the things like the focusing are better and you get better re resolution and then I can quickly uh, save to the appropriate <coughs> level that I want in iMovie and I use iMovie for editing. One thing to note though is 4K files, video files are four times larger than HD, so 1080p. So that's something to consider. The micro microphone sensitivity is set to plus 10 and I find that a good balance between uh, getting the sound and not getting too much clicking from the uh, focus motor changing the focus. Uh, the metering is center weighted and the image area is FX. The peaking highlights are useful. I've got that set to level three and red. So as I'm moving uh, the uh, videos uh, following the subject, I can see exactly what's in focus and what isn't. I use active delighting and I've got that set to normal. It's harder to adjust the shadows in uh, video editing, so I find it better to try and get that right in camera. The vibration reduction is on, and I also use electronic vibration reduction for underwater macro video. Uh, this is great for keeping the uh, subject steady, which is a challenge if you're hand holding underwater video for macro. Um, it's a problem actually for super macro, which I'll go into in a minute. The, I use the focus mode AFF, so that does a pretty good job of uh, keeping the subject in focus. And I use the small area uh, autofocus, and I find that much better for keeping the focus on the, uh, the particular subject. I, I use wide area autofocus initially, but I find that the camera would maybe get confused a little bit with a, a foreground subject, so it would switch, sometimes switch focus unnecessarily, and that's uh, solved that problem. Um, for the 105mm lens, I use a shutter speed of uh, 1 60th of a second, uh, the ISO is auto, and the aperture, I, I literally started with f11, but I find that the depth of field is uh, a little bit too shallow with the 105. So I've changed that to uh, F16. And what I try and do is put the focus lights as close to the subject as possible, the video lights rather, as close to the subjects as possible. So the auto, uh, the auto ISO does a great job of lighting up the, the subject how I want it. So uh, what are the things to look out for? Um, the, the U1 uh, on all the user uh, programmable modes uh, don't save quite all of the settings. So hopefully Nikon will change that in the future. So the, the ones that really affect me are white balance because I, I use different lights for photo and video. So I'd like to set that independently. And also I can't uh, save the limit monitor mode selection. So it'd be useful to have uh, that different for underwater 
compared to land. Um, there are quite a few levers here in close proximity, so it takes a little bit of practice uh, to uh, get some muscle memory, so you press the right lever. Initially, I, I used to press the ISO lever when trying to focus, but I'm, I'm getting better over a period of time. Uh, I, I used to, I actually carried a, a separate torch as well for a few dives, so I could uh, see the levers and uh, the the yellow bits that you can see uh, do uh, do fluoresce, so you can see them on on the night dive for. Uh, at least a minute or so after you've lit them up with a torch. It's useful also to carry a small white object so when you start a video you can place it just near, near where you're going to video and then that's good for setting the white balance manually on iMovies. Uh, for super macro uh, I've got a diopter on the front so you can see the diopter that's uh, plus 10 and plus 5 um, what I find for video is actually it's really hard to uh, to keep the video steady. For photos, it's the focus is great using the diopters, but for videos, it's really difficult to keep uh, the really small objects steady in videos. So that's something I'm working on. So let me uh, look at some uh, some uh, photos now. Examples. So here are some examples of nudie branches and. To take these, what I found was that um, it was very easy to adjust the light of the, the strobe. So the light comes through the bottom of the retro snoot and there's a focus light in the strobe. And then I could uh, very easily see that in the electronic viewfinder uh, uh, and set the focus on the right area, the eye of a nudie branch you want or the rhinopore, uh, I'm able to uh, get the lighting just right for the Malibe, uh, which is here. Um, for the, I, I trapped uh, the uh, the candy-coloured nudie branch actually because it was moving off its uh, what it was on a, a little bit of coral. And as it was moving, I was able to position the camera in front in the right position to take this photo. Also, I lined up the shrimp very well as well so that's where the uh, the retro snoot focus light was really handy so i could uh, I, I could get the camera low down with the monitor and i could get the position backwards and forwards until i got the right level of lighting to light up the shrimp how i wanted uh, the uh, lionfish is very beautiful colors this is a short fin lionfish so it's great there to be able to uh, light it up the way i want it and uh, again, that's, uh, I could follow it fairly easily with the monitor and get the lighting just, just how I wanted it through the retro snoot. Uh, lastly, the frogfish, uh, that was great uh, trying to, uh, uh, I could track the frogfish as it was moving. I initially set the focus for the, for the eye and then move the, uh, move the camera back whilst looking at the viewfinder and keeping the focus light through the retro snoot in exactly the right position. So now I'm going to show you the uh, video, uh, uh, show you a quick video clip, and here you can see how the video tracks a moving subject, the moving frogfish, and uh, does a pretty good job actually of uh, uh, keeping the focus correct. And I've also manually set the white balance and eye moving. So you see this is a, a pretty good job. So here are my final thoughts on using the, uh, the Z6, uh, moving from the D7200, which is a DSLR. And I think it's a huge step up in terms of video quality. It's much more easier to track subjects uh, it's much more easy to use the viewfinder to follow subjects as well. Uh, and uh, one thing to notice is you can hear the motor noise uh, with the F-mount lenses. I think when they release the Z-mount macro lens, that's going to provide really smooth uh, focus uh, and you won't hear the noise at all. Uh, for photos, I find using the, um, the screen and the speed of the autofocus allows me to get the photos much faster than with the DSLR. It's also 
uh, you get a lot more detail or some more detail as well. So the fo fo photo quality is better in general, but also because I can get the, uh, the camera positioned exactly where I want to get the angles right, see the light more easily, I'm getting better photo results as well. Um, the, the focusing is fast. One of the things to notice, uh, there are probably a few too many levers on the right hand side with my particular housing, but uh, that improves with experience and practice. Um, it's also important to turn off the red focus light for video because it's very difficult to get the uh, eliminate the red light from video in post-processing. Easier for photos but difficult for videos. Um, for super macro it's very difficult to hold the camera still. But all in all I think the Z6 is a great camera for underwater uh, macro photography and especially video. So remember uh, photography is not a spectator sports. See you next time.